Dom Universe. I'm back. Alright. Welcome to my new series on Black Goo. Now I told everybody I was going to drop a video breaking this shit down to Adams. Alright. So for people who don't know anything about Black Goo, you know, you may, when you first hear it, you may think it's silly. Or you may think it's bullshit. I'm going to have to ask you to refer to my previous video on artificial technology and transhumanism exposed, right? Where I basically go the fuck in on black goo. All right? I'm going I'm to I'm be the first to tell you right now that black goo is one of the most dangerous threats to humanity and the earth at the same time. Like, people don't... Re and you know, a lot of people don't even know what the fuck this goo is they they never heard of it in their life but you know it's always being shown in movies tv shows cartoons music videos is it being lady gaga music videos it's in snow white uh venom um what else alien covenant it's in it's in a lot of things it's in a lot of things it's even in video games all right and you know a lot of the places you see it, a lot of the shows and whatnot, a lot of the entertainment that you see it in is making people react the same way, right? So, you know, the people who get infected with this black goo, they go crazy, just like an alien covenant, just like Venom, right? This black goo is artificial technology, <clears throat> And it's actually sentient and conscious. And it can communicate with you telepathically. Alright? It's two kinds. It's a negative one and it's a regular one. I ain't gonna call it a regular one positive. Because you can technically program that one. Uh, to be anything. Now, both are technically programmable matter. It's a form of dark matter. Just like your melanin. Alright? So. With that being said. We have a guy named Harold Colts Vela. All right, you're going to listen to what he got to say about this black goo. So, um, yeah, here we go. Good morning. Oh, and by the way, I have not watched this whole thing. All right, we're going to go through this together. I do know it's some parts that need to be skipped. I should have grabbed some timestamps, but I want y'all to know, we damn near watching whole videos in this, uh, in this lecture. All right, let's go. Morning in Prague. Um, the presentation doesn't really work the way it should do. I'm just going to scroll through the pictures with an open program. I think it's, it should be okay for this purpose. Um, I would like to develop a number of things that I came through by researching things, um, starting from the topic black goo. Um, if, if you stumble into this topic for the first time, for, for most of the people it is something, something weird, something strange, something that is not um, important within the daily life. Once you um, manage to, to dive into this topic, you can realize that actually most of the things we are doing on daily life basis is driven, changed, ruled by this substance and this topic. So yeah. once you manage to understand what black goo is and what it does on this planet, it gives you a completely different understanding of um, the question, what rules our life? What turned our planet into the place it is now? And uh, with this understanding of the planet and our history that I'm will try to develop you also come to complete different conclusions what steps could be taken next to change this world into a better world I'm going to do this, this a little bit from um, uh, let's say uh, the story how I came to deal with the substance and with the topic so that 
you can just pick it up as a story. And this is something that, that occurred in my life a number of times that actually topics popped up and forced me to deal with them. And with, with the Black Goo topic, it was kind of the same. It started with an invitation of a not so close friend who just phoned me up and told me, Harold, I need to show you a documentary. And he, he was persisting. I didn't feel like I was not interested in the topic, but he made me come to his place at, at, a, at a certain time. And he showed me a documentary he just found on YouTube about the um, real cause or reason behind the Falkland Wars when Britain went to war against Ar Argentina to reconquer the Falkland Islands. And this was about uh, just, you know, meddling around with the little islands in the official press and there was a behind story telling about um, the Black Goo Reservoir being on um, Tula Island, one of the southern little islands that All was right. basically a sub... He said Black Goo near and or on Tule. Alright, if you never heard of Tule, look into Tule, it's a little island over here in Falkland whatever you want to call it right uh it's tied to the Thule society as well all right look into that now right here number one a substance with high magnetic properties considered to be the life force of every planet all right now we're gonna say almost every planet all right has a melanin template okay a melanin template with a chemical energetic magnetic composition unique to each one has both material elements and trans-dimensional uh, energies in its composition the akashic records from the etheric plane are stored within it okay an invasive negative ai this is number two an invasive negative ai black goo of artificial oops, extraterrestrial uh, origins that seeks ultimate control of all life forms on earth by establishing communication with all planetary organisms okay like I said there is a negative uh, black goo and they, see the uh, the negative one that they talking about this one comes from space alright this is a form of dark matter number one comes from earth Okay, Earth is comprised of all five elements. You know, some people say it's water, fire, air, earth, and ether. All right, that's the that's like that's the aurora borealis. That that's the plasma. All right. Uh, the is right now today. We talking about water, fire air earth and dark matter all right the earth is comprised of those five elements the universe is comprised of those five elements you are comprised of those five elements and if you want to call it six and say uh and add both dark matter and ether because they're not the same thing technically we have six elements all right now moving on the hidden agenda of the 1982 Falkland War was that the UK wanted to get control of black goo nano oil, okay, reported to be in the South Atlantic. At the end of the short war, a contingent of British Royal Marines was sent from the Falkland eastward to Tule Island, okay, where the majority of the ET black goo was said to be. I, it's a lot of black goo around the uh, the whole South America. All right? The whole South America, especially Venezuela. Okay? Uh, British intelligence knew a sentient fluid substance was on the island and wanted to collect it to experiment and use for military purposes. All right? This is Tule Island. You see that? Tule Island. So, moving on. 
substance that was sold on the southern american black market because it was meant to have the ability to host intelligence like a liquid brain being able oh and i found these i found these on the person's instagram shout out to this person right here selected by extraterrestrial i found it doing my own extensive research came across because it's actually see it's hard i ain't gonna say it's hard but it's not you go on google it's not gonna be as easy to find shit about black goo as you think it's gonna be all right you don't see too many people talking about black goo all right just look at the views on this video all right to um, build nanobots with swarm intelligence and all, all kind of weird things. So this was a very wanted substance and the Br British people wanted to have this substance for themselves. So they reconquered the islands, brought the substance to Great Britain and then tried to utilize it as let's say a substance to host artificial intelligence to create uh, nanobots with swarm intelligence this was their intention but it completely went wrong according to this documentary and they it's programmable matter it can be programmed with your voice it can be programmed with cymatic slash sound frequency and vibration okay you can communicate with it telepathically or you can communicate with it uh with affirmation positive affirmation but see when they when they talking about this negative sentient black goo they talk about how it is a, a it's a mind infection type shit they that's what they be saying it's an infection that infected the mind type shit that's that's how they be saying it it was an infection that it's actually this shit is not new it's actually from ancient times it's in ancient texts all right this this black goo comes from the abyss all right it's made from chaos dark energy which is what the universe is made from okay Basically, the, the substance of the oil already was intelligent and it was inhabited by a very loving being called... Oh, and again, just think of that, that Friday movie when that black scientist, when they shot, when they shot, the, when they shot Jason Voorhees up, right? And that black scientist uh, took his brain, took Jason Voorhees' brain and was conducting experiments on it or whatever. He was studying it, examining it in his lab. And the, the brain was communicating with him telepathically. And it was making him feel a low vibration. All right. And we, we know that the pineal gland is at the center of your brain. So he took the brain and he bit into it. All right. And black shit came out. We know the pineal gland excretes neuromelanin or what some people call adrenochrome. Okay. When he bit into the brain, black shit came out of it. Alright? Your neuromelanin is also a form of dark matter. Alright? There are elements we aren't even being told about. There are elements that exist in higher dimensions. Like, for example, how we got all, we got light, we got sound slash vibration, we got fire, water, earth, air. Alright? We got ether slash plasma, uh, dark energy slash dark matter. All right, then you got elements up there in the higher dimensions that we can't even perceive down here. Okay, when we go see a lot of these, uh, everything is light. All of these elements are literally light all together. They're light regardless. But yeah, when you go into higher dimensions, it's more elements. Okay, moving on herself mother earth and she refused to be abused for military purposes and while trying to still work with this sentient oil um, the mindset of the people working with it was messed up so basically uh, the documentary said that half of the people working in these military labs went nuts and committed suicide in very cruel and or funny ways just like in that movie alien covenant he had uh that black goo he killed himself with it 
He went crazy and he died. All right. And the other half kind of saved their own lives by um, finding to uh, affirmation saying, please connect me to the one source. Yeah. Which gave them access to the collective consciousness of the planet. Being one with all plants, being one with all animals, being one with all, hum all humans, being able to communicate with every living being on telepathic level. Yeah. And of course, after having reached this state, there was no sense in developing weapons to control or to go to war anymore. So they had to shut down the labs where they tried to utilize this substance. And that was basically the end of the story told in this documentary. This is like, you, you look at a story, it did not relate to my life back then. I was not further interested in the topic, so I just kind of stored it in the back of my head as something that came across my path. And back at that time, I actually was researching other things. I was researching the Morgellons disease. Yeah. Which is a transhumanistic technology developed. If you don't know about Morgellons disease, I I flushed that shit too in my artificial intelligence uh, video. Okay, a lot of y'all have that and don't even ain't gonna say a lot of y'all. I don't want to put that on y'all. A lot of people have that though. All right. Regardless, there are a lot of people with it because we're all, as a matter of fact. We're all under, uh, it's really coming from chemtrails, okay? It's actually, uh, we got smart dust coming from chemtrails. We got, uh, chemicals that are harmful, bending, uh, gender bending chemicals, cancer causing chemicals, uh, chemicals that, uh, give you, uh, polymers, ETC, and it's, it's calcifying your pineal gland. And calcifying the organs in your endocrine system. Like. It's the chemtrails. What I have. I See it's a. You can look this up if you want to. Or just look it up on YouTube. Or you can do what I'm about to say. It's, it's, it's some shit with B.O.B. The rapper he did. An experiment with Morgans. He gargled raw cranberry juice. For two to five minutes, he said. And when he spat it out, he spat it in a bowl and there was some weird looking shit floating in it. He poured alcohol in it and the shit that was in it started twitching. It started squirming. You hear me? I tried it. The It, it was only a little bit, but it not, nothing was moving. Nothing moved. But yeah. Alright. Moving on. I just want y'all to know. See, see, this is why this is why I heard somebody tell somebody uh, before. When you feel certain shit going on with your body, attend to it. Don't ignore it. Don't be scared to go to the doctor because you're scared what they're going to tell you. Check yourself out. Make sure you help. Right? Especially if you're somebody who eat bullshit. Okay. By the elites to mind control basically every single human uh, that is infected with this little fungi fibers or mycelium. And um, I was suspecting the Morgellon um, entity being part of German World War II bioweapon research. So I got in contact with people who not did the, the official history bit that is uh, Thought about World War II, but that did research underground facilities of World War II times that went into the mines, into the bunkers, and had. Hold on. Let's see if I actually think I put a, a picture up in here of what he's talking about. Let's see. Boom. Just making sure. Because we're going to get, get into all of this. We're getting into all of it. Let me see. But right here it say three warships and the Royal Marines evacuated seven Argentine military soldiers and three US personnel from the meteorological meteorological refinery. All right. Um military base on 
truly known as Corbeta Uruguay, which was then blown to pieces, resulting in a large mushroom cloud. Um, researchers and whistleblowers say there was much more than British sovereignty or uh, sovereignty at play in this. Okay, and then right here, see, this is what I'll be talking about. You see the, the, the food right here? We're going to get into that in a minute, though. We're going to get into that in a minute. One-to-one -one contact with the equipment and the content of these facilities. And I met some of these people just to ask them whether they came across Morgellon research in World War II. And um, I said, and now they did not. I never got answers to those. Remember, this ain't the only shit they be uh, uh, doing over there. They have labs over there. Know that. They have labs over there. You know what they be doing in labs. Alright. They already. See is it might be some genetic splicing going on over there. Gene editing. They already are able to do that. The ancestors were able to do it. If they able to artificially do it now. You have to ask yourself. Really do you think our ancestors didn't do that. They able to edit genes. Uh, with CRISPR. They able to genetically splice human and uh, animal DNA. They already got uh, animal and human hybrids being made. For example, look up chimeras. Look up, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Uh, uh, you got dog man. You got the uh, Sasquatch. I will be getting into, I'm, I'm about to do a video showing archaeological proof and DNA, DNA proof of uh, all mythical creatures and everything. But yeah, I'm going to get back to what I was talking about in a minute. Questions I had, but on one of these meetings, one of these guys doing this research just went to his car and came back with a box. And um, what he brought back was this. And he said this is some oil schist he recovered from underground facilities. There was about a ton of this. And he found it to be an interesting mineral. He didn't know what it is. And he said, actually, we, we managed to follow instructions we found to extract the oil from this oil schist. And it behaves funny. Oh, yeah. So our, our, what our, he... Right. Listen. Cause they this this uh this fluid does have bacteria, germs, and viruses in it. Right? This these are things that make up the human body. Okay. They are genetically splicing humans and animals together. They they already have uh they're already doing it in China, they're doing it in Japan, and they're doing it in Europe with monkeys, uh rodents, and fish. Alright? Now, just imagine what animals they doing it with that they're not telling you about. Where you, besides Agartha, where do you think that these cryptids are coming from? Okay, I posted a picture on Instagram showing uh, uh, ancient folklore or medieval folklore of a human animal, uh, uh, a human cow hybrid. All right. Then I posted a real life picture of a cow with a human head, just like in the medieval folk folklore. All right. This may have been China. This may have been, J been Japan. All right. But look it up. Human animal, a uh, human cow hybrid. Okay. And I'm going to have to ask some of y'all. Y'all may want to start using DuckDuckGo because, you know, Google like to hide shit. All right. They show you what they want you to see. This is why I be saying you got to type a certain way. Even Google will tell you to type a certain way. Even they'll tell you that. But yeah, you know, you, you yeah, they like to they like to show you what, what they want you to see. But moving on. Found is an oil. Oops. Okay, here we go. An oil that... Um, why doesn't it play? 
Yep. Yeah, and that goo is a, a crude oil. Remember, crude oil. Oil is together. the earth's blood. Remember, it's the earth is a living, breathing organism. All right. Go, Harold. Come on, Harold. Bruh. Bruh. So you can see how it is forming a kind of liquid crystal. It is very fluent, but itself organizes. Liquid crystal. It's forming kind of the shape of an insect. Liquid eye. crystal. Remember also, liquid crystal is what extraterrestrials like, uh, well, we ain't gonna call them extraterrestrials, interterrestrials like greys and reptilians use as holograms to look like whatever they want to look like so some of these politicians are actually reptilians wearing liquid crystal hologram suits all right let me show y'all something all right here this is why you see this is why this is why you be seeing in news clips and shit you be seeing people uh face start shifting you be seeing their eyes start flickering and and uh morphing and shifting and shit like that this is why right this is why they using technology like this do not ever in your mind doubt that the technology we have our ancestors didn't have you got to think to yourself where the fuck did our these governments get their uh technology you can look at ancient times they were using electricity and power grids and shit they've been using shit before we had it the technology we see today, they have, these governors, these elites have more technology than, than we have today. They are hundreds of years ahead of us in technology. They just give us or show us the technology they want us to see. I, they had fucking light slash electricity producing light bulbs. I showed y'all that light bulb in the uh, pyramids before. What video was that? Well, it, I, it was a, I mean, it was probably the, uh, the Lucifer video. Whatever video it was, I was showing the light bulb in the pyramid with the lotus flower at the beginning and the serpent going through it. That's just like your Kundalini. All right. They had nuclear weapons in ancient times. There is a picture of a fucking Moab. If you don't know what a Moab is, M-O-A-B, that stands for Mother of All Bombs, which is a big-ass nuke. There is a hieroglyphic in Sumeria of them dropping a Moab. Okay? When they talking about wars and shit like that, and them killing off certain people, they were dropping grenades. I mean, not grenades, they were dropping fucking uh, nuclear weapons. Ask yourself where the elites that run governments today got their uh, nuclear weapons. Because if you think about that, a nuclear weapon fucking explodes, right? Who the hell taught one of these demonic 13 uh, bloodline niggas how to craft a fucking grenade using the same science? As a fucking atom, if you split it, it's going to cause an atomic explosion. Who the fuck taught them to create a bomb? Okay? How we go from... And it wasn't even a, a, a long time period of us going from carriages and horses to goddamn cars that run on gas and using electricity and, and towers and shit and power lines. Alright? It was not a big time jump. We evolved quickly. So again, when you see pictures of uh, presidents and, and, and niggas who got on these suits and shit, and pictures with aliens, don't think they just with them aliens to shake hands and meet. Nigga, they're making deals. 
They're making deals. All right. Doing this in the sky, y'all. When you when people uh thinking they see spaceships sometimes, that be them niggas. When they put in uh biblical figures in the sky, they they, they be holograms done by these niggas. And I'm not gonna say that's a hundred percent of the time, because obviously it, it extraterrestrials come and go for me. That's a fact. That's facts. start this video and not be recording but uh look yeah y'all get the gist look at that and that's how they making these holograms that's how these that's this the science of how these reptilians able to shape shift and look like humans all right you see it right there liquid crystal glass that's liquid crystal glass with the hologram on the inside all right oh look but the way the uh the the reptilians version may look may look a bit more advanced i right? you obviously can't see their glass suit or whatever it is they have on to bend the light or make their liquid crystal hologram all right let's look at this real quick let's see if we can hold up let's see what we got here Liquid crystals are a state of matter which has property between those conventional liquids and those of solid crystals. For instance, a liquid crystal may flow like a liquid, but its molecules may be oriented in a crystal-like way. All right, let's look at images. Look at that. Look at that. That's what they're using. Oh, look. I mean, this ain't showing much, but I'm, but still, this is what they're using, my nigga. Completely symmetrical, and something that happened on that first meeting. This is kind of the, the second meeting. He had only one of these glasses. With the first meeting, he had two of these plastic containers with two eyes of this kind. And he, he demonstrated how if you put the two eyes in a distance of four to five meters, they started to react on each other, which went like, like the two eyes looking at each other first, then realizing, okay, there's something of my sort and I want to unify to one bigger entity and they started to pull trying to to get closer to each other which did, did not work because they were again even though this black goo is magnetic this is not thorough fluid 
one more time. This is not ferrofluid. Bought in these containers, so the moment they realized they cannot come closer, they started to fight to try to get out of the port by shaking and jumping inside the ports. So th this had something of uh, an intelligent being in a liquid form trying to get what it wants to get. Um, okay. Sorry for the mess with the computers. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was my, my first meeting with a substance that I had seen kind of in this or heard about in the, in the documentary that I heard before, saw, saw before. And I told those people, actually, what you're dealing here looks to me like black goo. And actually, it did have an emotional impact on the people that were in that room. What, what I kind of felt was that I was... Um, I was getting cold-hearted. It was like f a little bit uh, the feeling you get in these big old churches where you freeze and you have some kind of respect that is funny. Um, what happened next is that, that I, I was a little bit in, um, in, in problem with the hotel we had the meeting because they didn't have a room for me that night. And I was forced to sleep in the car at two to three degrees, so I was freezing to death. And then I just had a shower in a friend's room who still got a, one of the last rooms available. And the director, the, the uh, manager of the hotel, started a, f a fight with me because I took a shower, although I didn't pay for a room, just to warm up in the morning. Um, and I realized that I was very, very close to beating the woman up. And I, I just realized that this is not typical for me. Normally, I don't, I don't have the, the intention or the, the need to, to beat women. Yeah, you bugger. And um, so I realized just facing this substance um, did something with me. If, if I just felt into myself, normally the heart activity is somewhere here. There was nothing left of this. I could think, I still had some kind of sexuality within me, I had life force, but all the rest was gone. I was like reduced to, to three chakras. He was reduced to three chakras. <laughs> Y'all know the three chakras is the animal state. I, we know love does not exist in the third dimension. Your third, lower three chakras are ex associated with the third dimension. I was down there in the lower three chakras when your consciousness down there. Your animal state, survival, instinct, that's what you're acting off of. Habits, lust, duality. Alright? Laziness. Alright? That's your lower three chakras. Love is in the heart. Alright? A person who in a uh, second slash sacral chakra, that's about duality. If you're feeling narcissistic, or you only help people to help yourself? Yeah, that's that's second dimensional. Okay? Moving on. So this, this is how it felt like, um, just in my system. Um, and it did not really go together with the description of the entity from the documentary. But back then I had no clue, it just was, you know, there was one type of black goo t talking about in, in public in, the, in this documentary. I saw something that resembled the liquid, it had some strange properties as well, and it didn't do me good. So the, the next impulse was, um, if you're kind of energetically infected with something on, on information level, uh, what might help, was, that was my thought, was um, um, to develop information medicine to get rid of this state again. So I took a sample of one of these stones and go back to them and uh, drove to my healing practitioner who has all the technology to produce globally as information medicine or radionic medicine or homeopathic medicine. And we, we took the information pattern from the stone and imprinted it on globally 
following the theory that you can heal things with the information of the disease. You can heal a disease by introducing the information of the disease. So we produce medical globally just from like, this black oil. Just like how they try to use vaccines with a virus in it to make you immune to said virus. And I took them in the hope to um, get rid of this funny state of myself being so empathy free and cold hearted. And the thing that happened actually was very similar to the thing described by this British documentary of people reconnecting or connecting to Mother Earth. So the funny, the cold state started to disappear from my body. It started from the feet and went up, 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 up. And after like 14 hours, it reached my head. And after the coldness was out of my head, like I was completely reconquered by the other field, um, it felt like Mother Earth in person intruding my body from the feet into me, saying hello for the first time since. Mother Earth? Now again, just like we read earlier, the planet's got that black goo or dark matter, right? So let's read into this a little bit. Just a little bit. We ain't got to do this whole page. Because there's a lot of shit on there. Aight. Nanotechnology is the manipulation of matter. Right? On an atomic, molecular, and super or supra, same shit, scale. And for our purpose of discussion. In the quantum level. Okay, recently, the massive influx of cosmic rays... Um, in intergalactic plasma gases into the Earth uh, core and polar regions, along the along the uh, along with the alien attempt to harvest and collect this new incoming energy source, I right, because the reptilians are actually using that black matter as well, or the black goo, has revealed the deeper purpose of black goo. The massive plasma gas transmissions are uh, shifting the dark matter templates in the Earth at the ele element elemental level. This is being observed as transforming carbon allotropes that are present in fullerenes or buckyballs. Alright? Buckyballs. If you don't know what that is, see, see, this is the thing about Ascension Glossary. They use a lot of words that, like, I, a, a couple of these words, I had to go deep ass digging to find out what they mean. So, sometimes they use words, yeah. but yeah. Let's go look at what a buckyball is. Alright? Even though some 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 people you call it a buckyball. The longer word is a buckyball fullerene. Buckyball something. It's longer than that. But yeah, look at this. Alright, this is what a buckyball is. Buckyballs, also called fullerenes, were one of the first nanoparticles discovered. This discovery happened in 1985 by a trio of researchers working out of Rice University named Richard Smalley. Harry, Harry Croto and Robert Curl. Buckyballs are compared or composed of carbon atoms, all right, linked to three other carbon atoms by covalent bonds. All right, you learned about that in ele elementary. However, the uh, the carbon atoms are connected in the same pattern of hexagons and pentagons you find on a soccer ball, giving a buckyball the spherical structure. As shown in the figure uh, below, the common, the most common buckyball contains 60 carbon atoms and is sometimes called C60. Other other sizes of buckyballs range from those containing 20 carbon atoms to those containing more than 100 carbon atoms. All right, and this is your buckyball. Looks like a soccer ball, right? Okay. The covalent bond between carbon atoms make buckyballs very strong okay the covalent bonds between carbon atoms make uh, buckyballs very strong all right listen and the carbon atoms readily uh readily <laughs> readily from covalent bonds with a, a variety of other atoms buckyballs are used in composites to strengthen material okay you listening buckyballs have the interesting electrical properties interesting electro uh, electrical properties so that means 
that the black goo is potentially electromagnetic. All right, it can be a conductor of electricity. All right, and it's also magnetic. Okay, we know how electromagnetic ma magnetic energy work over here. Uh, buggy balls have the interesting electrical properties of being very good elect uh, electron acceptors. All right. Which means they attend, uh, they accept loose electrons from other material. This feature is useful, for example, in increasing the e efficiency of solar cells and transforming sunlight into electricity. All right, we talked about that before. All right, that's how our ancestors they didn't use this fake electricity that we got being produced by uh, the houses and shit or. The uh, the the equipment we use in our homes is actually emitting low vibrational electricity. All right. So when you in your house, in your room and you got a, like, like a bunch of just your laptop, your TV, your phone and your router on. Just imagine the energy, the electrical currents that's going in your room. All right. Or the electricity or the uh, what's it called? The waves, the radio waves that's coming from. Uh, what's it called? The router. All right. So moving on here, let's go right here. Let's look at this dark matter template. Matter of fact, let's go right here real quick before we get to that. Right here, buckyball. Carbon allotropes such as fullerenes are solids in normal conditions, but are changing their state of matter into liquid at sub uh, subatomic scale from the massive amount of recent plasma gas exposure. A fullerene is a molecule of carbon in the form of a hollow sphere ellipsoid tube in many other shapes. All right, spherical fullerenes are also called buckyballs. All right, the dark, the dark matter template is the antimatter instruction set of the planetary body. Okay, the Earth has multiple bodies and exists in multiple dimensions, just like we do. Okay, and it, and it has been filled in certain areas with this alien sourced black goo it was programmed into the dark matter template of the albion body okay albion uh the word alb or the prefix alb means white albion is the archaic name of uh england all right you see it's talking about the ley lines the dexahedron we ain't got to read the rest of this the black, the Albi Albion, uh, the Albion body of the Earth and the human is associated with the collective consciousness of every human and the Earth put together. All right. That's how we tap in with the Earth. It's also associated with oneness. All right. The collective consciousness and memory. So you're tapping into that when you are alive here and you're gaining memory back and fi finding out who you are. All right. This alien black goo, they go on to talk about how it, they you the elites use it, slash the reptilians use it to manipulate timelines here. All right, so if it's in the templates, see, this Albion body is also associated with the uh, the spine of Albion. All right, let's look at what that is real quick. The spine of Al Albion. This is where's my uh. Here we go. This is in England. This is underground in England. This is the spine when they talk about the spine of Albion and the cross, the uh, and they talk about the uh, what's it called? They talk about the serpent, the uh, and the staff or the rod. This is what they're talking about. It's also associated with energy flowing under the earth into the third eye of the chakra. All right, it's also got to do with the ley lines and the vortex portals that open up around the earth. There are many, many vortex portals around the earth. Even scientists say the same thing. They're like, this is actually proven by science. This is not just, like, the, nigga, these are portals. There's even a portal near a Bermuda Triangle where shit goes disappearing in the water. Ships and shit like that. All right? Boats and shit going missing in the water. People going missing. All right? Objects going missing in the water. Disappearing with nowhere to be found. Because there are portals opening up around the planet. They open and close, actually. All right. Now, right here. Let's look for the word Albion. Because I read this whole page. This page is mad long. I'm going to try to get through this quick for y'all. Let me see. 
Albion, uh, the Temple Mountain or Sarasota Gates, which link to the Stonehenge Gate, which is in Europe, and connect into the Bellin, uh, Bellinus Line or Spine of Albion. Now, scientists may call that line, uh, that 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 line, the Bellinus Line. All right. Now let's go find uh, this word again. All right, it talks about right here the Temple Mount and Sarasota Gates, which link with the Stonehenge Gate and uh, connect into the Bellinus Line or Spine of Albion, that is located in the United Kingdom. All right, located in the United Kingdom. If you look up where the third eye chakra is, which also the third eye chakra of the uh, the Earth, it, it actually moves every hundred something years but right now it's actually in west europe it's in west europe all right matter of fact don't i got a picture up in here let me see if i'm not mistaken uh, i'm probably gonna put it in here let's go see then. let's go see right here uh let's see let me, let me let me go on here here real quick. We gonna see where this where is where all the uh, chakras located. And as a matter of fact, we ain't even see we not we not why this shit moving slow. We not we don't even gotta look at all of them. We just gonna look for the third eye because if you actually keep reading through this right here, right? And it's talking about a serpent. It talk about a rod. It talk about crystals. It talk about. Uh, it's basically talking about crystal, crystal. All right. Now, again, here we go. Right here, we gonna we gonna look at this dark matter template real quick. The dark matter template is the blueprint on which the eternal source particle atoms, all right, eternal source particle atoms, aka your melanin, all right, your melanin is the God particle as well. Atoms and molecules are built in order to regenerate the layers of eternal light. This is actually a type of matter, uh, a type of matter body that is fully merged with eternal spirit substance, all right. We got here. right here now what what this says to me understand the holographic geography all right as many of us know our planet has been uh put put on a false 23 degrees wobble in order to disconnect all the various vortices all right vortices plural for vortexes and power grids that we can see the remnants of in megalithic structures. All right. And so they go on to talk about how this energy traveled through the ley lines. The ley lines is uh, the breath of the earth. All right. That's the breath of the earth is going in the same, the same, uh, the same motion as our toroidal field. So if you look up Taurus field, you're going to see that. You're going to see what it looks like. It's the magnetic field. Just like we have. That's your spirit. That's your breath. All right. That's the gas. That's the oxygen in you. Okay. So, yeah. Damn. Thousands and thousands of years. It was one of the most intense experiences on spiritual level I had to, to open myself to, to this entity that feels like a black whale or felt oh, yeah, like a black whale. Hold up, I don't wanna get too ahead of ourselves. Ahead of ourselves. Oh, this this page tweaking right here. Hold up, let me see something real quick. I got y'all right now. Hold up. Give me one second. Uh Right, let me see. Right here. 
All right, it's raining, so the fucking it's thundering and shit. So the signal getting a little tweaky. Look at this, right here. The third, the sixth third eye Ajna chakra of the Earth, the Aeon Activation Center mobile. The third eye chakra of Mother Earth does not have a specific point of existence. Okay, is the only is the only one that moves. This is due to the uh, this is due to the movement of Earth's axis. Okay, uh, each time the Earth's dimension changes, or we enter a new age. Uh, age, a new age, the position of the chakra changes. The third eye chakra moves every 150 to 200 years or every aeon. The aeons are also linked, uh, lined up with astrological constellations. It is believed that in 2012 we shifted into the age of Aquarius. You see that? Which means the third eye is currently located in Western Europe. I'm near Stonehenge! My nigga, I knew that before I looked this up. That's the crazy part. When you connect it to the earth, when you learn about chakras, when you learn metaphysics, you learn how the goddamn universe works. Everything is synonymous. Everything is related. All right? Everything can relate to you. That's what humans look for. All right? You can do everything that everything can do. It can go as deep as... As deep as this, and you may see, you may say I'm reaching. It may go as deep as this. A top or a top can spin. You can spin. Okay. Water can flow. You can flow. Air can blow. You can blow. Fire can burn. All right. Or fire can dance. You can dance. Okay. The sky can what right now it's raining it can release a liquid you can release liquid i the trees grow you grow i the the universe just is you you well actually that's a mindset that you reach everybody is not at that mindset so we ain't even gonna go there but moving on it is believed that it okay so yeah Ajna chakra opens portals all right it allows extra dimensional energies to enter mother earth it is said that invisible in uh invisible inhabitants come to this area to bask themselves in this energy which they use for the new age also immortals are associated with this chakra like me <laughs> you know you know and the indigos come out here with the uh the third eye hyperactive pineal glands uh, even though these seven chakras have a very high energy there are also other high points of energy around the world where the ley lines travel these include bermuda triangle karachi pakistan devil sea triangle japan i mount fuji japan moi uh moi hawaii sedona arizona i lake louise canada findhorn or findhorn scotland Kiev, Ukraine, Bali, Indonesia. It's and it's a lot of shit that go on around Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. I've been hearing and reading so much out of nowhere about Papua New Guinea and in Indonesia. So I'm gonna start looking into those two places because it's yeah, it's a lot of shit going on in those two places. But yeah, Eastern Island, Angkor Wat, Cambodia, Sarawak, Borneo. Uh, Gabon, West Africa, Cape Town, South Africa, Lake Taupo, New Zealand. I and and it's more of uh, vortexes than just that. It be vortexes popping up in random places. Okay, matter of fact, we can open portals. We can open portals. We can open portals. It may not be exactly like those, but we can open portals. I, I didn't show how to open portals already, but moving on here. Let's get back to let's get back to Harold. We understand dark matter. We already know what that is. We already know the agenda. We already know it's nanotechnology. We already know what it's used for. Whale diving into me. And it, it was a really warm welcome in a way. Um, 
So at that point, it was the first time that I kind of realized that black goo is one substance, but there seem to be two qualities. One with three chakras that make you aggressive, cold-hearted, free of empathy, and one that has the full capacity of this planet, the full emotional set we can experience with love and joy and everything that, that makes us human. Um, so that, that was kind of the, the first experiences I had facing this substance. And then one, once I've been into the topic uh, without even looking for it, more evidence came to me. Like try, trying to understand where this comes from. The next thing that happened is that Majid Abdelaziz, a friend of mine, I'm, I'm into desert greening projects with in North Africa. He, he was hired to set up a, a weather station in Paraguay. And actually the area he went to was the area where the Bush family bought that big lot of land to, to have a place to, to, to go to if they lose North America as a family. And he said, funnily enough, our, our Chancellor Angela Merkel has bought a villa just close to Bush, Bush's uh, f farm or, or um, whatever they run down there. And another five kilometers further away from the village where all these big people try to find a place to stay. There was a, a mountain area that was closed by military forces. Nobody was allowed to enter. Unless you're talkative and leave a little bit money here and a little bit money there and make friends with the soldiers. So he was allowed into this area. And what he brought back was this type of stone, which is basically a sandstone with a little, little black droplets inside. He said there were other areas that were completely black. The stone was completely black. And from the sensation of this stone, it was very similar to the other black stones I had from the German researcher. It was like getting at your bioenergetics and it also had this extremely cold and evil aura around it, this stone. And um, to, to, to test if it is really this type of material, all you need is take a little magnet and apply the magnet on the uh, oil schist or on the sandstone. And when you move it on the surface, it's like, it's like shivering. The magnet is interacting on, on, on some unknown level of physics, I, I would, would call it, this is like, like quantum entanglement appearing, creating some gravitational force. So th this is, you can feel it in your fingers that this interaction is happening at the same um, moment. The magnetic field is kind of also washing out this information field and is strengthening the biophysical connection to the stones. So if you want to have sensations from these stones and you apply magnets, everything is multiplying. It's getting much, much stronger and more intense what the things you feel yeah. in the presence of the stone. So it, it was quite easy to, to understand uh, that it, it is actually of little black dots in the sandstone is the same material is black goo oil schist as well, or black goo oil dots in sandstone. But the other interesting thing with this one is um, the, the shape of the sample occurs when you have a meteorite coming down from outer space. This, these these um, rectangular structures, the entire area was just cracked in the same way. This is like, like if you have an impact, you have very strong forces working on the stone and the moment kind of it f kicks back, you know, you have pressure and then the pressure is released, then the stone in the environment is breaking or the stone that is coming down is breaking in exactly this way. So we had kind of geological proof that this material is not from this planet because right. it is connected, it is found at a proven meteorite site. Yeah. And from there on, I... 
he said at a proven meteorite site, right? So remember in that artificial intelligence video and in transhumanism exposed. I posted a video of Akira talking about that uh, clear white gelatinous goo, and I said that I it, is it possible that that may be star jelly. I and I want y'all to know star jelly is not that white fungus that uh, that you find in trees and in the woods and shit like that. That is not star jelly. Star jelly comes from fucking meteorite, the center of a fucking meteorite. All right, think about how when you watch these movies and shit, and something come out the sky like a meteor and it be something inside. I can't think of no uh, no no movies except for being Tim, but his his his. His Omni tricks was actually inside of a metal capsule. And that that but the Omni tricks is actually synonymous to this black goo because the the the, the Omni tricks came out and latched onto his arm like a black liquid. And, in, and he was able to turn into any alien. But the, he also had an alien that was called Upgrade, which was actually like a liquidy black and white, but mostly black alien. Work, right and he would jump on to things and upgrade whatever it is so if he wanted to upgrade a motorcycle he would turn into that alien jump onto the motorcycle wrap his body would like just melt onto the the uh, motorcycle if you never seen Ben 10 before and the motorcycle would upgrade it would change the you would change the way it looked he would be able to morph the goddamn vehicle all right so that's what dark matter is actually able to do he actually had an, a gray alien, a tiny gray alien named Gray Matter, right? who actually, there was also an alien on BN10 that was the same type of alien he called Gray Matter, who actually invented the goddamn watch, the Omnitrix, all right? So this black goo and this, 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 this programmable matter has not, is not new. It's not new, all right? It's related to a uh, liquid crystal all right i basically had um, the basic idea is where fact, and like, what to matter look matter of fact look at this the star jelly star jelly also called astro mixing astro jelly is a gelatinous substance sometimes found on grass or even a bunch of trees now remember in that video I showed y'all with the white gelatinous goo raining from the sky, they said it was raining that white, uh, clear, translucent gelatinous goo for uh, a few weeks. I think six weeks. All right. If I'm not mistaken, it was six days. It was six days or six weeks. Or no. I think it was six days and one of the ladies got six, uh, sick for six weeks. All right. Now, when I saw it, I asked myself, is this that star jelly? All right now, what I told y'all, you eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells, bacteria and viruses, make up the human body. All right, I told y'all and showed y'all that they are actually creating life in labs. Okay, now look, even the uh, what's it called? The tilapia is a genetically modified fish. Okay, according to folklore, it is deposited on the earth during meteor showers okay i would i'm not saying all folklore is true but oftentimes i would believe a folklore over a wikipedia or a mainstream scientist all right now i'm, I'm just saying i'm only saying star jelly is described as a translucent or grayish white gelatinous uh gelatin <laughs> the the that tends to evaporate shortly after falling all right, now remember in that video, I under, when I posted this uh this Wikipedia and I underlined fallen, fallen like a fallen angel. And also right here, it says explanation. Explanations have ranged from the material being the remains of frogs, toads, or worms. All right, just like how the Egyptians use animal fat, just like how uh, the black goo is said to have uh, some of these 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 cells or these these bacteria in it, all right? By uh, to the bioproducts of cyanobacteria, which is a bacteria that can asexually reproduce and it reproduces very fast, all right? 
So again, this black goo can actually do that. Potentially. Like I said, with with that gray goo, which we will be getting into later on in this series, that gray goo. Hey, the uh, but yeah, the 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 paranormal reports of the substance date back to the 14th century and have continued to the present day. All right, star jelly. Okay, the hit they have. Hold up, let's go down here because I have not read it down here. Let me see what they got down here. They have been there. Ha, there have been reports of star jelly for centuries. John of Gat, uh, Gaddesden, for example, mentions stellar terra, star of the earth, or star. And the medical writings describing it as certain mucilaginous uh, substance lying upon the earth, and suggesting that it might be used to treat abscesses. A 14th century Latin medical glossary has an entry for oligo, uh, described as a certain fatty substance emitted by the earth, or from the earth, my bad. This is commonly called a star which has fallen. All right? But you know, they try to correlate shit or make up shit and, and, and put it to, I ain't, I ain't saying they wrong, but they do that. All right, that's how that's why ancient history is all twisted nowadays because we got people like Egyptologists and archaeologists who go to these ancient civilizations and they misinterpret the fucking hieroglyphics, the ancient text in ETC. And when you go back and you trying to look at your own history, you learning the wrong shit because they twisted your history. All right. But yeah, that's 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 the uh yeah. Let me move down here real quick. Okay. See, it got eukaryotic cells in it. It got prokaryotic cells in it. Let's look up cyanobacteria. Cyano, also known as cyanophyta, are a uh, phylum consistent of free living photosynthetic bacteria. Blah, blah, blah. You're curiotic. A sister group is a. Cyano are a phylum consisting of free living uh, photosynthetic bacteria in the endosymbiotic plastic. A sister group to glio margarita that are present in some eukaryotes. I and this is a prokaryote. Okay, this is a prokaryote. Look for then. I started to go a little bit into history to see if there are any records of these stones. And um, what you actually find is a lot of. Um, sources mentioning these stones being worshipped by black magic cults. If you look into, into the stories told out of this area, basically you have uh, the, the people uh, worshipping these stones, going there once a year, um, sacrificing children in front of the big, big black stones, waiting for the demons to appear out of the stone, to come out of the stone to accept the blood and fire sacrifices. This is what is told um, in this about the black magic tradition. If you what that sound like? Let's look at what that sound like right here. Right. Right there, Moloch. That's the god of the Canaanites. That's who they sacrifice children to. Hold up. Because I showed y'all this guy before with the one of the Canaanites walking up to him with the with the baby right there. See it right there? And then he put him into the fire. Look at that. They served their idols and were in, ensnared by them. They sacrificed the demons. Uh, sacrificed the demons. Their own sons and daughters 
shedding innocent blood, the blood of their own sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. All right, desecrating the land with bloodshed. They defiled themselves by their uh, by their actions, became adulterers or adulterers by their uh, conducts. Okay, uh, what's it called? <clears throat> That's Satan. Cain is Satan. All right. Cain is set. Abel represents Osiris. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Let's go. You go further back. Um, you find a piece of this stone being um, of immense. And I'm under the impression set got uh, something to do with the genetic origins of Canaanites because he is the god of foreigners and his wife if I'm not mistaken was actually or one of his concubines was actually a Canaanite alright a concubine you got a wife and your other wife they sometimes consider that or when they got a wife and multiple other wives they consider them concubines alright in case y'all don't know when they have Cause they did a lot of Egyptians, a lot of ancient civilizations, people did po polygamous relationships. All right. So sometimes when you look at the uh, Wikipedia of these guys and you see they got multiple wives, they have multiple wives at the same time, not just in different lives and different avatars. All right. Like Shiva did with uh with uh Sadi. But yeah. Importance in Mecca, in the holiest site of the Muslim community. And every pilgrim going there is meant to kiss this stone. And this is not a going against Muslim now because the Peter's Dome in Rome is supposed to have one of these black rocks right in the middle of the big building. Oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't not, because we got to get on them Saturn niggas too, because I already. Like, my nigga, this cube is Saturn's cube. This is Saturn's cube. This is Saturn's cube. Okay? This is this is Saturn's cube. This is Set's cube. You see, the Muslims out there, wow, I posted this on Instagram. This is Saturn's cube. Alright? Let me show y'all. Let me see. Right here. Because y'all. It's like. I, I keep telling y'all. These these monotheistic. Religions. Are out they fucking mind. Alright. Hold on. It's low. It's low. It's low. Oh yeah. Here we go. Here goes some of these pictures. Right here. You got. Oh yeah. And that. The hexagon. The hexagon. On the, the. On Saturn. In the center of Saturn. Which is the eye of Saturn. One of the eyes of Saturn is actually, uh, it's that's a cube, my guy. That's a cube. That's a cube. It's over here. It's, it's low and uh, goofy. All right, there it is. Look at that. There it is. Look at that. Look at them black cubes. Look at these black cubes all over the planet. Black cubes all over the planet for what? For what? what some of these these cubes actually got portals they got energy centers on the room all right they all over the place this is saturn's cube moving on so as it looks like all religious cults you 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 can think of maybe with an exception of some some Asian philosophies, they have this stone in the center of their cult, and uh, especially the churches, the old churches in Europe, they all have a black altar stone from this quality, and this is why you do not feel love in the church. This is why you have this cold, shivering feeling when you go inside, that it is supposed to kind of give you respect or fear of God more than feeling the love of God at that place. 
So it is, it is kind of a, a funny thing because at that moment you start to rethink um, if the world you, you were introduced to is actually the way it's, it's been told to you that it is because, um, you know, I always thought people go to church to get closer to God, to become better humans. Same with Muslim people. The philosophy is full of love and respect, actually. But then they go to a holy place and connect themselves to the most evil thing you can imagine. So something I, I started to realize was completely wrong about the perception of our whole world. And because you go to church thinking you're supposed to fear God. My nigga, you pray for one, you praising something outside of you. Two, what was what else? When you go to church and you 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 doing that uh Eucharist, the drinking the wine, aka the blood of Jesus, and eating the bread, aka the flesh of Jesus, that's satanic. Alright? That's satanic. Christians tell you certain shit is demonic, rituals are demonic, but that is a cannibalistic ritual. The God of the Bible is a cannibal. He ate his own children. His name is Cronus. All right. His name is Cronus to the Greeks. All right. He represents the planet Saturn. To the Canaanites, his name is El. Okay. To the uh, Anunnaki, his name is Anu. But his son is Set. All right. A.K.A. Satan. A.K.A. Saturn. Sometimes they, they combine Saturn and Set. Or, or Saturn and An or Anu, and you get Satan. So it's Sat and An, you get Sat An, Satan. Set and Anu. Alright, the Son and the Father. Alright, Anu was considered the uh, the God of the gods or King of the gods, and then his son in Leo, who is Satan, was considered the King of the gods. So that's Cronus and Zeus. In Sumeria, that's in Lil and Anu. In Greek, that's that's uh <laughs> in Greece that's Zeus and Cronus. In Egypt, that's Osiris and Geb. Alright. So I, I continued a little bit to, to research the history. Let's see what comes next. This for example is um, the temple of Aphrodite had one of these stones in the center of the cult. If you look into the uh, Eastern cultures, it is called Shiva's Lingam as an occult stone and to protect people from the very strong impact of this evil information field outside of the times when it was in ritual use. They covered it with women's hair to, pro to, to kind of shield and protect the humans in the environment from the impact of the field being emitted by the stone. So there you have kind of, in, in the Asian tradition, you have the, the, um, the form it was brought into. It is a typical, a little bit looking like a 60s rocket, space rocket, um, typical form to, to recognize the, 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 um, the just the form and the, and the, the looking of, of these occult pieces of black goo oil shiz used in former times. And it's, interestingly, the next one I came across where Turkish and Greek coins showing the tree of life in paradise, the one the apple was hanging on that Adam was uh, convinced to eat, um, and left and right of the tree of life in, 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 the, in the paradise garden, we have two Shiva's lingam. And this, this was like going, aha, now, I, now I, I start to understand what happened when we were deteriorated from paradise. 
This is kind of the, the core, this is the, the point where the core understanding started to come. What actually happened to us? Now, um, thinking that, or realizing that we have obviously two different types of black goo. The Falkland quality that also can be found as mumio in rising mountain areas all over the world. We have it in the southern Russian republics. It's like like people's medicine to take this, the black oil that is found in caves in rising mountain areas. We have the same thing in the Himalaya region used by Tibetan monks for healing purposes. So we do have this earth type leku that is loving and friendly and we do have the alien type leku that came down with meteorites and having these two in mind now imagine let's say 16,000 years ago this is how we we can kind of date find it put a date to it a swarm of meteorites came down containing the black goo of a different planet that used to have a different biosphere. And before that, um, actually, on our planet, everything was in order. We, we were a race that had healthy instincts and that was completely connected to the collective consciousness of the planet. Um, if you if you feel into it and, and try to un to understand the quantum physics part of this of this thing, it's um, um, everything we everything we um, sense, feel, and think actually is happening on biophoton level. A feeling is an exchange of biophotons in an annihilated state of certain color and certain frequencies and certain patterns in between our DNA clusters. Mm -hmm. So if I think my brain produces blue light in geometric figures, most of the thinking is like in binary fields. Hey, if I feel... What I'll I tell you imagining, visualizing ultraviolet light helps you reach gamma brain waves. That's the thymus. That's the ground chakra. That's supra consciousness. All right. That's that's forty hertz. Okay. If I have sexual feelings, then it is a um, red light thing happening with a different geometry that goes in ninety degree angles. If I feel love, it's about green light green to red purple light with uh, angular structures um, of 30 and 60 degrees so this is all kind of light exchange within the dna clusters and what what the black goo seems to do on physical level is to collectively mirror all the biophoton exchange happening in the biosphere which is interesting because this is like like we are individuals. Every being on the planet is an individual regarding itself as an individual. But on the other hand, we can connect to a sphere that is also having biophoton exchange. And that is mirroring everything that is happening within the biosphere, within an immortal collective consciousness that is within the planet. So this is kind of the, the concept of black goo, how it should be in, on a healthy planet. The black goo, if you, if you look at the cave system and the ri rising mountain areas, it seems to that the black goo is actually the thing that is filling the ley line systems of a planet. And whenever what? you have rising mountain areas, sometimes... It's what I just say to y'all? What, what I just say to y'all? What I just say to y'all? What I just say to y'all, when you understand the metaphysics of the body, 
you can understand the metaphysics of the earth and the universe and vice versa okay you are synonymous to everything everything is conscious to an extent you know why because the highest God is everything in everyone at once that is why he is called or it is called the all or I am the all I ley lines are cut off and then the oil is coming through the stone zipping out of the inner walls of cave systems so th this is kind of like like you can put the puzzle together to understand how a biosphere should function and now take an event 16,000 years ago when an alien black goo comes down with meteorites and suddenly the entire biophoton exchange within the biosphere has the, p the possibility to redirect from the earth type black goo to the alien type black goo just because it is clo it is closer it was lying on the surface of the planet instead of being at three to five miles depth within the stone so what happens then is that suddenly we are connected to completely alien instincts we are connected to something that is giving us the instinct to be cold-hearted free of empathy and all the other qualities that can be felt within this oil schist, just by connecting to it and observing yourself what it does with you. I'm not going to hold you. I feel like, what if reptilians and greys are actually injecting that shit into themselves? What if some of them caucasoids with no soul try injecting it into themselves and it make them react the way the dude reacted in a uh, alien covenant when when you watch prometheus which is the prequel to that the that white alien at the beginning Actually, or, or I'm gonna call him an extraterrestrial. That white extraterrestrial, he and he he smelt, he he ingested some black goo, and his body disintegrated, and he fell down a fucking like he died. Do you want to exactly know what it does? Just watch the ways of the German SS soldiers during World War Two. They used these stones as um, decoration of their knives, as something to put on letters so that they don't fly away in the wind. Like, they just occ occult substances to, to create things for daily life use. So they're all the time connected to these dark energies. And everybody knows what they did when they were conquering Europe, how cruel they were and how free of empathy. So this is basically what what must have happened back then, and you you can you can see this from these coins, like showing that actually the act of deterioration from paradise is connected to the to the use or the the contact of you, humanity with this alien black goo oil schist in the garden of paradise. And I don't know how this happens, whether the the soil around the tree was um, infected by the oil or the, the, the tree itself was connected so the moment you take the apple and eat from the tree you introduce the substances you need to completely entangle yourself um, to the alien collective consciousness and from there on we, we kind of live in duality we do have as humans we do have a certain possibility to consciously connect to the seven chakra system, be a good human, or we can connect to the other chakra system that is tempting us with the power we gain by doing this, with the cruelty we can live 
and the profit we can make by being cruel. So this is all about the physical substances that brought this type of duality onto the planet. Um, just one picture from, from, from the holy site of the Muslim people. The stone they're supposed to touch, also filled with black oil schist. And it goes on um, in a way that you, you need to realize that actually, if you, if you look in, into the black magic traditions, when people went to worship black goo stones and then the demons came out of it. Mm -hmm. This is something that, that needs further understanding as well. Oh. Um, th there is one Hollywood film Muslim that niggas, very precisely niggas. shows what this is about. And this is the film uh, Final Fantasy. Has anyone seen it? It's basically the story. If he's talking about that, that, that Final Fantasy uh, by Enix and Disney, that's uh, like associated with kingdom hearts that black shit is on there too bruh like them them a pop them them uh what's it called krakens and dark aliens uh demons coming out the sky and shit and the dark stuff being in the sky that's all in kingdom hearts that that dark matter being in the sky and the dark energy and whatnot and the dark demons made out of the dark stuff that's all in kingdom hearts all right it's all of it. And if is and if it got some and see that like I said, the cracking got something to do with this, just like Akaraj told to, uh, told you. Just like I showed y'all in that art uh, artificial intelligence video. All right? Even look at Black Ops 3. I all I see every time I do these lectures, I gotta refer to the cartoon because they've been telling you niggas. Look at Black Ops 3. The Apothecons were krakens they were like the nigga davy jones from uh pirates of the caribbean unleashing the kraken they released them jellyfish demons through the ether using the hydron portal i mean hydron collider particle collider whatever you want to call it so, uh, spinning the ether in the vortex vortexes are portals all right your breath it spins if you ever blew smoke out your mouth and you pay attention to the smoke it comes out in a vortex. Your breath is a vortex. Your kundalini is a vortex. Your toroidal field is a vortex. All right. Moving on. It's about a, a, a human cup. And, and to add on, not to keep pausing it, but remember, space, the ether, uh space what you call space that is a less dense form of water that is water all right when you look at all the ancient civilizations and they talk about water they talk about certain floods and certain seas they not talk they they not see they're talking about the fucking universe all right they're talking about the universe when we when we talking about sticks the uh the place that the greeks call sticks that place that you see Hades where the, the souls, the spirits are swimming through the water. That place represents the universe. The universe is the abyss. The universe is the underworld. Alright? The universe is the underworld. Hades is Osiris, the god of the dead, the god of the underworld. The god of resurrection, rebirth, life, and death. Alright? Cerberus is Anubis, the dog-headed god. I that everybody see in Egypt, the black dog head god. I not set, but Anubis. Okay. A lot of people don't even know what that animal is that's on set. I think it's a tapper. Some niggas call it a set animal, which is some type of dog with pointy ears. Hey, moving on. She's a scientist. He's, I think, a soldier, and the planet is completely destroyed by alien attaching spirits who suck out the life force of every every living being on this planet. Mm -hmm. And basically, everything is already destroyed on on planet Earth. And uh, this woman is 
she's a shaman and she's collecting animal spirits, kind of finding the last surviving animals to pick up their spirit. And then they go to the place where the meteorite came down and find a black goo-like substance. And they wow. manage to infect the alien black goo with the information field of Mother Earth. And then kind of Mother Earth manages to conquer the alien information field, healing the entire planet. So th this is basically, I, I, I do not know who wrote the script for this film. So they programming the matter, right? Let's, let's, let's look at this real quick. Pro. All right, first, programmable matter is matter which has the ability to change its physical properties in a programmable fashion based upon user input. Based upon user input. Based upon user input. Programming. Or autonomous. Or autonomous. Autonom, uh, autonomous sensing. All right? AKA communicated with it, uh, with it telepathically. Programmable matter is thus linked to the concept of material, which inherently has the ability to perform information processing. So it can it can understand what you're trying to tell it. You giving off the energy when you speak. But let's go look at videos of this shit. Look at it. Look at it. You type in black goo or whatnot in Google, you're never finding this video. You're never finding this. I've never seen this video. I've never seen this video typing in Google about black goo. All right? You got to type in sentient oil. You can't even... See, you can't even type in black goo and find this shit because the typical person is going to type in black goo. Nobody even know about programmable matter. Programmable matter, you can see that on the first page. All right? See, it's still moving slow. It's tweaking. I ain't about to sit here and be waiting. Uh, sentient oil black gold. Hold on. Create anything you want. Programmable matter. Here we go with this one. Uh, we don't need that there for a second. But there's an extreme deep knowledge because yeah, exactly. Whatever. Let's go. Bruh, it's four minutes. Let's go. See, the, the rain got my shit tweaking. Think the fax is dead? Wait until you can fax. Your whole Hold up. I'm gonna get out a second. Whole body. You know, back in our self-reconfiguring modular robots episode, we talked about robots that can reshape and reform themselves so that they can do any particular task perfectly. Well, what if we take that same idea but think small? I mean, really small. I'm talking about programmable matter, actual three-dimensional tactile material that can take on any predetermined shape and then change shapes on demand. Imagine that we have a programmable material workstation. That might include a little trough with some beige putty in it. And this putty looks See totally that? normal until you... See that beige is the same to me Beige is the same as khaki. Alright. You go on this page called Elif. Dot S E. Alright. Transhuman terminology subpage. Now you scroll down here. You scroll down here where they got words. And you see blue goo. Alright. Make sure I ain't skipping none. Because I'm gonna make sure we get all the goos here. You, get, you got blue goo. You got blue goo right here. Let's go see what blue goo is. <clears throat> see basement universe. Fuck all that. Where's blue goo? 
Where Blue Goo go? Did they take it off or something? I was, where's Blue Goo? It's right here. All right. It's in alphabetical order. I don't see why they just opened all of these instead of opening Blue Goo when I clicked Blue Goo. Nano machines used a protection against uh, Grey Goo. So Blue Goo is used to protect against Grey Goo. Grey Goo is also, and I quote, a dangerous goo as well, just like the negative black goo. But we, like I said, we're going to get into Grey Goo later down the series. And other destructive nano machines, possibly even used for law enforcement. Nanarchy. According to the in, uh, entry in the jargon file, it is sometimes used to denote any form of benign nanotechnology in the environment. Alan uh, Lovejoy. Alright. That's blue goo. What else we got on here? Uh, and again, if y'all want to go look up to this, that, there's the... Uh, the address up there. <clears throat> Green goo. Again. All right, we got green and gray right here. Nano, uh, green goo is na uh, nano machines or bioengineer organism used for population control of humans. All right. Either by governments or uh, eco-terrorist groups. Which would be like agents, all right? Uh, will most probably work by sterilizing people through otherwise harmless infections. See Nick Zabo's essay, Green Goo, Life and Era of Human Genocide, all right? Now, right here, you got Grey Goo, okay? Self-replicating Von Neumann uh, nanomachines spraying uncontrollably. Building copies of themselves using all available material. This is a, and that's just like, oh yeah, hold on. This is, this is a common, uh, mentioned, commonly mentioned nanotechnology disaster scenario. Although it is rather unlikely due to the energy constraint in elemental abundance, more probable disaster scenarios are the green goo, golden goo, and red goo, khaki goo in, uh, scenarios as a protection blue goo has been proposed. All right. Hold up. Matter of fact, let's go back there. It said, it says self-replicating Von Neumann machines. We're going to see what Von Neumann is. Von Neumann. A Von Neumann machine able to move over interstellar and interplanetary uh, distances and to utilize local uh, materials to build new copies of itself. Such probes could be used to set up new colonies, perform mega scale engineering, or explore the universe. See the far, far edge party. Yeah, we ain't doing all that, let's go. Uh, down here we got golden goo, golden goo. Another member of the Grey Goo family of nanotechnology. Disaster scenarios, the idea is to use nanomachines to filter gold from seawater. If this process got out of control, we would get piles of gold goo. The, the, wizard, uh, the wizard's apprentice problem. This scenario demonstrates the need of uh, keeping populations of self-replicating machines under control. It is much more likely than Grey Goo, but also more manageable. So if, let's say, uh, nanotech, uh, what's it called? Artificial technology got out of control, they would use that or Blue Goo. All right. Let me see what we got on here. All right. Golden Goo, Grey Goo. Look at that. Khaki Goo. I, I think it's safe to assume this would be the uh, uh, hold up. military nanotechnology. See Grey Goo. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Let's see what we got down here. 
Human in analogy with Grey Goo, Pink Goo to refer to Old Testament apes who see their uh who see their purpose as being fruitful and multiplying, filling up the cosmos with lots more uh such apes, unmodified. Alright, now let's go let's go look at this little uh video real quick because pink goo, it say humans. Alright, it say pink goo is humans. Pink goo is humans. Pingu, hold up. Where is where is that? Right. And you know what? And you know, like when I show certain shit like this. And some of this other stuff, you know, people may look at it as conspiracy theory. I do not do conspiracy theory on this channel. I try to stay the fuck away from conspiracy theory. So if you ever see me post something that say conspiracy theory, I'm either debunking it or I'm proving it to be right. I don't get on here making shit all mystical and and all all goddamn conspiracy theory. Steve, I don't do all that. I don't I don't make shit all questionable and, and, and scary and fear based. My nigga. When I'm posting it, I'm letting you know what the fuck going on. We live in a world where shit been going we live in a place where shit been going on that will make you think, Why the fuck was I born? You get me? So a lot of y'all don't even know what the fuck going on is on this planet. Alright? Most people would shit themselves. Not not literally, but hypothetically. Alright. A concoction of beef and ammonium hydro uh hydro hydroxide. McDonald's was using it as a base for their burgers. A newly leaked video shows a be back. Look at it. That looks somewhat like that, uh, like crude oil, don't it? Look at the texture. Look at the texture. Now I, re I remember McDonald's coming out and saying they don't use that. Ain't nobody listening to McDonald's. We know chicken nuggets are, is fake meat. Now you know I had to come down here in the comment section to see what niggas was talking about. The image portrayed in the video are a uh, frozen yogurt. I've worked in the industry. The dairy industry and have seen these extrusions uh extrusion machine machine and then you know you have somebody else in this comment section who said they work there this is how you confuse the fuck out of people all right so you had to come down here you had to come down here somebody this lovely lady right here no it's not it's known as pink slime and it can look a lot like frozen yogurt but it's made of cow entrails all right and treat it with ammonium hydroxide. All right, you got the Wikipedia page for pink goo. Uh, pink goo, ABC as judge to throw out pink goo slime lawsuit. All right, history of pink goo slime knows. Uh, history of pink goo slime, how partially defatted chopped beef got uh, rebranded. All right, then right here you got pink slime at McDonald's America's Meat Epidemic Report. Right here you got go ahead and eat pink slime. See, I'm just showing this right here, so y'all could just, y'all could go to this video if y'all want to. Go down there and click them links if y'all want to, but let's go look at this pink slime Wikipedia real quick. Pink slime, also known as lean, finely textured beef, or LFTB. Finely textured beef, all right? Boneless, lean beef trimmings of BLBT is a meat byproduct used as a food additive, a food additive. A food additive to ground beef and based beef processed when it's processed is programmed for you all right it's programmed for you imagine going out shopping for goddamn body parts you going shopping for body parts no offense because I, I have relatives that eat meat but still 
you you know you know what the fuck they doing with the meat. You know meat ain't got no color. You know it, it's affecting your DNA too, don't you? All right. Now you can go and read this yourself. Read the rest of this yourself. This is the shit they putting in that meat. This is why I see when I, I if I know a person that eat, eat McDonald's, oftentimes I say, you eat McDonald's? Like, why you eat McDonald's? My nigga, you sit, you let that shit sit, not even, it don't even take a, a long for your food to sit and it's going to start to lose its texture when you eating at McDonald's. The fucking food is sloppy at McDonald's. The McDonald's out, out of this country are better than the McDonald's here. They got high scale McDonald's in the Asian countries. What was that? China? Look like a five star hotel. All right. Not saying that mean anything. I'm not going to no fast food restaurants to eat meat. When I was eating meat, right? Over time, I was starting to notice myself starting to gag and get turned off by meat. And you know, if you look around the world, this is happening to a lot of people. A lot of people want to go fast. A lot of people want to be pescatarians. A lot of people do it by a lot of people do it in uh, stages by quitting uh, red meats and pork, and then chicken, and then going into turkey, and then going off of turkey and going into uh, fish, and then going off of fish and going into just dairy products, aka vegetarian. Uh, not just eating uh, dairy products, obviously, but going into dairy products, all right? Dairy products and plant-based. And then you go into vegan. That's just plant-based. Then you go into frugivore, all right? That's like just eating fruits or uh, smoothies. Then after that, uh, it's like some people some people give it uh, veggies and then fruits or fruits and then veggie. But you do fruits and veggies together. And then after that, you got breatharian, which is surviving off of prana from the sun. All right. Surviving off prana from the sun. So if you somebody who is clairvoyant enough to see like the white particles floating around in, in the in the like just in, in your face or white particles just floating around in the air, that's goddamn prana. That's prana. That's that strong prana. When it's coming from the sun and it's in the sun. That's 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 powerful prana right there. And you absorb it and you breathe it into your solar plexus. All right. Moving on. Basically, the setup that is described in the film is the setup that is basically ruling the entire planet since 16,000 years, giving us this type of duality, giving us demons that for me appear to as the lost souls of a biosphere that self all right we gonna get back into him in a minute all right hold up what is he here he is mm -hmm. If this is the right spot, it may have been at the beginning. Yeah, here we go. Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lavermont Weber, and um, today we're in part one. I'm coming to you in part one of a multi-part series. As we speak, uh, there are uh, further parts of this multi-part symposium exposing predatory pathogenic artificial intelligence. It's it's a subject that's been off the screen it's been off the on, on the screen see lady gaga with that black shit on her off the screen look like a vampire uh, very p powerfully and so the intention of this um 
multi-part series is to bring this to uh, to the public uh, as public education, as awareness, and hopefully to mobilize uh, we humans um, in a greater state of alertness and awareness. How we became aware of this uh, predatory pathogenic artificial intelligence. Talking about um, the black goo. And what we're doing in, in this work and uh, what our intention is. In oh, look. Positive. Um, and well. Some of the stuff they said, they came to the same conclusions I said. Uh, I might not see uh, her and play it. But I'm trying to see if I can find it. <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah, we're going to get into another video. I'm going to show y'all this. We're going to read the, the rest of these, uh, these little pics right here. Hold up. Right here. I'm going to get into this video too. Researchers uh, contact these and whistleblowers have said government uh are, uh, around the world know of the existence of a sentient black woman say that some of them have used in, it in words by programs at companies uh, like Jet. Where is this? So program? much of this is about Gek Macroni or Marconi. The cabal is said to use it in chemtrails. Again, I proved this. This shit was raining here in Michigan. It was, this shit was in people's driveway. This shit was on people's car. They, they couldn't. It was hard to remove. All right. UFO experts found dead after vomiting black liquid. All right. Now, some may say he was vomiting up sludge. You want to prove it was just a uh, bio sludge? You want to just prove it was it was produced by the human body? A half ton of these stones were found in WII era Bavarian mine. When the black stones were liquefied by researchers, they produced the self-organizing, uh, self-organizing native uh, black goop. All right, all right, right here. What we got? Boom, boom, right here. All all major industry uh, industrialized foods have been uh, contaminating. Or contaminated with metallic nanofibers containing microscopic amounts of programmed negative black goop. The fibers are delivered mostly via chemtrails. Okay? Foods confirmed include most fast food chains, hamburgers, uh, chicken nuggets, Cheetos, bottled soft drinks, all brands of Coke products, all right? and foods with, foods with GMO or transgenic elements by avoiding these types of products and working on uh, and, and work on raising individual frequency you are likely to be affected by black goop so again by avoiding these types of products and work on raising individual frequency you are less likely to be affected by black goop I Boom. A group of positive short blue ET kept a hidden underground base inside a cave on Thule. I I told y'all it'd be a lot of shit going over there on Thule. I it'd be extraterrestrial shit going on over there and in Siberia. It's a lot of shit going on in Siberia. There are vampires in Siberia. I there are uh, aliens. This it was a dead extraterrestrial found over there in, the, in uh, Siberia. I, I have a picture, my nigga. I got a video coming. Got a video coming on extraterrestrials and cryptids. Well, I got a series coming on extraterrestrials and cryptids, but in DNA on uh, the the races because some of these races actually have these goddamn mythical creatures DNA. Oh, okay. Now moving on. Oh, and they're in the Bibles and shit. They're in the Torahs and shit. But a group a group of positive short blue ETs kept a hidden underground base inside a cave on Dooley. With dozens of large containers of nano oils. Alright? They told contactees that this sentient black goo was brought to Earth many millennia ago due to the actions of a negative ET race, reptilian, 
and they have been working for decades to de-engineer it with little success okay base existed from approximately w uh ww1 era deep underground et projects required their lab to be in antarctic climate all right blue significant links uh blue significant link with high ranking argentine officials all right u.s also aware of mission giving uk's uh giving uk's position with territory and area also aware all right and so for some of y'all who may think that's bullshit and you don't know how to con you don't think people can contact extraterrestrials you can contact extraterrestrials telepathically or through meditation get the fuck out of here all right they they are just like some of these extraterrestrials can actually interdimensionally travel you goofy they can bend light they have that technology but yeah we gonna get into this 